the psalmist writes, Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. Blessed are you, and blessed will you be. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. And so as we gather on this day, I wish the church during this Easter season also remembers St. Joseph, the worker, St. Joseph, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the husband of Mary. We come together in thanksgiving for all the ways God continues to show love to us. And how of that love and that mercy that we ask God for pardon and for strength. You came together, the nations, into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so let us pray. O oh God, creator of all things, one God forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, went and entered the house, laying his hands on him and said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately things like scales fell from his eyes and he was baptized. And when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Blessed be the Lord day by day, God our salvation, who bears our burdens. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, the Lord. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. 
Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I always enjoy the story of Paul. And I enjoy the character of Paul, particularly these early sections in Acts. I actually was more interested when he starts writing letters, to be honest with you, but that's another issue. Uh, because he always reminds me of my students. I spent like, I guess, maybe 40 years teaching juniors and seniors. And the reason I think Paul's like my students is a lot of them are sort of hell raisers. Uh, and I always view Paul as a hell raiser. I mean, Paul's raising hell. When he's at Stephen, he's raising hell. He's going after him. He's trying. And he has this great desire. He has this great energy. He has this great passion, and it keeps driving him. And the only question was, as it is, I think, so, with so many of the young guys that I've taught, this energy, this passion, where is it going to be directed? And how can we direct that? You know, I think some people say, well, we got to get rid of it. You know, make them all a little sort of rational minds who sit there and think everything through. I'd say, oh, I hope not. I wanted to stay people of passion, but I just want to hope that we can move that passion as it was for Paul, the service of Jesus Christ. And I focus on this passion because I don't think Jesus was a great philosopher. You know, uh, forgive me God if you know, like all the others, but I don't know that Jesus always thought, okay, this woman came up to me and asked me for I wonder if I should forgive her. I wonder if I should heal her. Uh, let's see, if I did this, then I think she says, I'm going to heal her. My heart moves me to heal her. I'm going to do that. I can, you can worry about this, all oh, you Pharisees, about whether it's on the Sabbath or not, and all this other stuff that worries you. I cannot not do this. My heart moves me. And Jesus is the one who gives everything. He's so passionate then he holds nothing back. You know, I think when we look at the gospel, Jesus is saying, I don't give you just enough. I don't give you, okay, this is all you need. I want to give you everything. I want to give you everything that I am, everything that I have. That's what someone who's passionate, that's someone who's, what, someone who's a lover, that's what they do, I, I think. You know, I keep thinking that uh, what is this, all this stuff about eating the body, drinking the blood, eating the flesh? Well, it's not directly related. I keep thinking back to a line from uh, Chronicles of Narnia, uh, in which uh, one of the characters, basically a horse, uh, runs into the lion Aslan and has this strange line that says, You can consume me because I'd rather be consumed by you because you're so beautiful and fed by anyone else. And I guess I thought of that line because what is this about? Jesus says, I want you to consume me so that you can be consumed by me. It's not just part of me. It's not just this. It's just not, you know, my teaching. It's just not the passion. It's not just these various things I've done. I want you to consume me. And I mean all of me, so that you can in likewise be consumed. And I think of that also just today, since this is the day in which the church, remember St. Joseph, the St. Joseph the worker. Uh, I always love this feast. It's now an optional memorial, I think. Uh, but in 1955, when I was in fourth grade, when this was uh, set up by Pius XII as a feast of the church, I was thrilled because it was about somebody who was just a working person, Joseph. Someone who was just the head of the household. Someone who was named Joseph because that was my father's name. I think that's the other reason I really liked it. And he 
he's someone who has a great deal of passion. He's not a great intellect, I don't think. Maybe he's a carpenter. I don't mean he's not bright. But he has a great love. And it's a love for his family. I think he loved his family much more than he loved his work. And I hope that's true of almost every father. That I do this not because I necessarily always love the work. But I love the ones for whom I am working. He gives a home. He gives nourishment. He gives love. And whatever he does, he does out of love. I'd say the same thing about most of us. I don't love teaching. I mean, I enjoy it. I don't know that I love teaching. I think I love the students I teach. And that's why we keep doing what we do. Jesus, Paul, Joseph, I think always led with their hearts, not their heads. They put on love. And that made all the difference. And while we can do a great deal of philosophizing and thinking, I think all of these said, lead with your heart. Let the exclamation follow. Let the worrying not follow. Just do it and do it out of love. And so then, on this day, let's remember St. Joseph. Let's bring our prayers before God, please. <clears throat> we pray for all who are ill and all victims of the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all caregivers who put their own lives at risk to help the afflicted. We pray to hear our prayer. We pray for all homeless and helpless. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all religious and political leaders who must work to solve this crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our loved ones, parents, families, students, faculty, and staff, for our alumni, benefactors, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died from the virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our own personal intentions. We also offer up those that we've been asked to pray for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 hear our prayer. So, Father, we stand uncertain and anxious before the place where you dwell. Be not distant, but intimate and swift to answer our prayers. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For it's through your goodness that we have received the bread we will offer you, the fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. The flows of God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For it's through your goodness that we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Bless us, be God, forever. And pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifices of our hands for the praises of the Lord of His name, for our good and for all His holy church. O oh God, town of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become a means of protection for those who call upon you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts with the mouth of the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise 
to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection unto the coming death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us forth to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from our people. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all and with his spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, did you take away the sins of the world? Grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And so then at this time of communion, you take a moment to make an act of spiritual communion, particularly those who are unable to be with us here uh, today in our chapel, but who are with us in prayer and in meditation and in thought. And so we say, my Jesus, I believe you are truly present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Because right now I cannot receive you sacramentally, at least come spiritually into my heart. As you have already come to me, I embrace you and unite myself to you. Do not allow me to be ever separated from you. Amen. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God through him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.